Hello everyone and welcome to Making Realism Overhaul Look Good. This follows my previous two videos where I told you how to install Realism Overhaul, a very basic bare bones installation of Realism Overhaul, and then how to test your first rocket in Realism Overhaul. But the installation that we built only had stock parts or maybe just a couple more parts. And so we want to make our rockets look better and then also make Realism Overhaul the world look better. And those are two different steps. I would like to focus on the rockets first because that's more detailed and involves many more mods. The whole making the world look better is comparatively simple actually. Um, the problem with it is that it's also resource intensive. So you want to make sure that you have the parts necessary to build your rockets first and then add that because uh, that may cause so much lag on your particular system or it might not have satisfactory results. Uh, so that you will need to leave that off. So best to test the installation with the part mods first, the basic part mods. We're not going to go overboard. And, um, you know, you could do this all in one fell swoop. Uh, you could install SSTU Labs. Uh, this particular mod is a very large mod, and it will give you a lot of parts, most of which are configured properly for Realism Overhaul, but not all of them. It's important to note that when it comes to configuring things for Realism Overhaul, most of the configurations are in the Realism Overhaul folder itself. So let's quickly take a look at that. This is the installation that we built in the previous video. And so your folder structure should look like this. In the game data folder, I called the main folder test with your executable here. So that's the thing you launch from. And uh, here is all the stuff, including the module manager um, configuration caches. And so the Realism Overhaul folder is here, and we see engine configs. These are generic configurations for the engines, so that any engine that is titled like F1 will get that configuration, so that they don't have to add the configuration to each F1 engine, because there are a lot of mods with a lot of F1 engines. And instead of adding the configuration manually to each of them, uh, what they do is, uh, in the mod itself, they add a little line that says, just use that F1 engine configuration for this, because it's an F1 engine. So it's like that. And uh, so these are the supported mods from for Realism Overhaul, and you can see SSTU Labs. And SSTU has a lot of stuff, S, uh, SRBs, all, all sorts of engines, including the F1 engine, um, and uh, also the Orion capsule and landers. We can take a look at the SSTU page and you can see a uh, fair variety of engines. You can see the name of the engine there. They're modeled per the real engine, and so they should look realistic. Well, that, that one is not a real engine. But the rest are based on real engines and are meant to look uh, close to the real thing. So that's pretty good. And actually, uh, external nozzles and everything, which is fancy. And then Soyuz, obviously, you can tell. And launch escape systems. And so you can build your own rockets. Uh, this Series B is more Apollo. Yeah, you can tell it's the Apollo module. So if you just want all, all these sorts of rockets, um, you can get this. And it, it has configurable tanks, landers, and but, but it is a heavy mod. And there are a lot of parts to get used to. Um, it's also not entirely configured for the career mode, and since the next video I'm going to do is going to be talking about how to set up the career mode, I don't want to put this in just yet. Um, I, I'm not too sure how well configured it is for the career mode just yet, and I'm more comfortable with the mods that I've been using in career mode so far. So let me uh, go through the mods that I suggest you install first. And those are the ones in this recommended slot first. Uh, first of all, we do want procedural wings. Um, we haven't installed that yet. Oh, this, this link doesn't work. So let's make sure we're in the game data folder. And that link to procedural wings doesn't work, but that's all right because we have this alternate page that I linked in the installation video. So you want to go to this uh, procedural wings fork and um, just download that. It's a fairly small mod again. Okay, so you unzip uh, Procedure Wings, and you can see Game Data and Alternative Texture. Uh, I, I just use the regular texture, so I go into this Game Data folder and unzip this in here. Alright, so now you have Wings. 
Uh, we needed tanks. If you remember from the installation video, we don't have tanks that actually fit the, the um, pods. The pods have been resized by 1.6 times, but there aren't any tanks that fit that. So we need procedural parts or uh, SST Labs also has configurable tanks. So it will handle that for you if you want to use the tanks from SST Labs. Procedural parts is a little bit more lightweight, like I said, and it ha it, I, I'm just more used to using it. It's only a 2.5 um, megabyte mod. And um, yeah, it has a little bit of a quirk with, uh, with the newest version of KSP. Uh, watch out for SRBs, especially not working quite right. Uh, just pay attention to the parts to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I'll show you what I mean when we get into building rockets. Okay, procedural parts. And we're just gonna go down. And the next one is, uh, I want procedural fairings. Procedural fairings makes a lot of things easier. And of course it's a long time mod with uh, compatibility to realism overhaul. And so I'm just used to using it in this context. And I'll show you the difference between the procedural fairings and the stop fairings, and you can judge for yourself whether it's worth it. So procedural fairings is in. And uh, deadly re-entry, I think, adds extra heat shields. So that could be helpful. And I, I don't recommend it if you have a system that might get easily strained by all these mods. Uh, but I'm going to add remote tech as well. So I'm going to put deadly re-entry in, just in case we have some extra heat shields that way. Now we get into the meat of things. We haven't added any engines. We've got tanks, that's good. And we need some more engines. The two mods that I'm going to start off with, and, you know, th there, there are going to be uh, discussions about this, um, are FASA and the Soviet engine pack. So, for FASA, I, I don't think this link works for the oh well no this is good actually um yes so you can use this link off of this page or probably this um if there's a link somewhere around here maybe under other um nope okay just go with that link from the forum page and this will be fine we'll download this version for 1.2.2 um there are faster versions for earlier things uh, not on this page though. You'll have to go to the forum page for FASA. What is FASA? FASA is with historical American rockets. Okay, and so if you want your Mercury, your Gemini, your Apollo, those rockets will be in FASA. And so it's your go-to mod for those for now. Um, as far as I know, I just like it better. The, I think there are some other mods. Of course, SSU Labs has Apollo. And so there are other mods that do the same thing, but I like the models in FASA better personally. So, but do we need all of that? I wanted to make a lightweight installation right now. I don't want to add all of the rocket parts. I just really want the engines. And I want to make my own rockets. Uh, if you want to make the historical rockets exactly as they are, keep all of the parts. But after we download this, I'm going to trim out some parts and I'll show you how to do that so that I only have the engines that I want. Okay, so here's the FASA zip, and as you can see, it's 223 meg. That's why I said um, we, we might want to trim some of that out if we're not going to make historical rockets. If you're going to make the historical rockets, keep everything. You may want to keep, like, the Gemini pod or something. Because there's a one-person pod, there's a three-person pod in, in stock, but there isn't a two-person pod. Or you might want to keep the Apollo pod. So the way uh, FASA is arranged here you can see that we've got the Apollo stuff here, Gemini stuff here, ICBM, uh, there's not much here, actually. Um, yeah, I, I haven't used those parts. Mercury's here, there's some pro parts, um, I don't know how big this is, 7 meg, Maybe you can decide for yourself uh, if you want Pioneer Pro parts, Explorer probe, and then um, these are the props for the interiors, Okay, and then these are the actual interiors. So that's the Apollo interior. That's the, these three are interiors for different variants of the Gemini capsule. That's the interior for the launch tower. The launch tower is in miscellaneous here. That's the launch tower. So it has an interior for the Kerbals. Uh, that's the Mercury interior. That's a Gemini lander interior. And that is the lunar uh, excursion module, the LEM interior. 
So if you delete some of the pods, you may want to delete the interiors. I'm just going to keep the engines. So I'm going to delete the ICBM stuff. Um, I don't need the Mercury engines since we're going to be doing more advanced stuff. Uh, Gemini, it does, uh, there are some engines in here, like the infamous Gemini lander engine. Um, maybe I'll just keep the Gemini lander engine. Uh, technically, you should probably just uh, delete the whole folder and not be too... Because some of this stuff depends on each other, okay? Uh, because there is an attempt to limit how much texture duplication there is. So if you delete the wrong stuff, you might get parts about textures and stuff like that. Um, that's true of many mods. But I'm going to attempt to keep my friendly little Gemini lander engine, which I love. And the Apollo, I, I don't, I'm not going to keep the command module. We're going to have many different versions of that. Um, I'm not going to keep the structure. This is the structure of the Saturn V here. Okay? And these are very sparings for the Saturn V. So I'm not going to build the Saturn V, so I'm not going to, oops, I'm not going to keep that. I'm not going to use this lunar excursion module right now. Okay, I just want the engines. This is the engine folder. And we get the F1, the H1, the J2, the M1, the RL10. The Apollo APS, I think, depends on something in the uh, Apollo command and service module folder. So we'll leave that be. So now I've got that stuff gone, and since I've deleted the command pods, I don't need all these command pod things, but I'm keeping the launch tower. You may want to get rid of the launch tower. So I'm keeping the launch clamps here and solar panels. Okay, uh, so that's pretty trim, and since I deleted the, I mean, the lem is gone, so all of that is useless. Um, so this is a little bit hard to figure out, but uh, I mean, you can see that's 13 megabytes gone there. So that it's it's not trivial to trim this stuff out. Uh, so so far, I've turned a 220 megabyte mod into a 25 megabyte mod, and so that's pretty good. All right. So I mean, you could get rid of the pro parts. Like I said, that's another seven megabytes. I'll keep those for now. Later on, I'm going to reinstall the entire FASA mod. Uh, so, yeah, just expect that. Once we get into building the career mode save, we'll want all the rest of the parts. We'll want the lander cans and the command modules and everything. But now it's fairly trim. We want to see how trim we can make it. That's uh, We've got pro parts. We've got engines. We're good. Now, the other mod that we want engines for, this covered uh, American engines. What we want is now Russian engines. And so you need to go to space dock and you need to search for Soviet engine. Okay, and this is a little bit more complicated. It's not, uh, I, I don't know if they have a link on the, on any of these pages, they might. Um, but I think this is the most straightforward way to go about it. Go to Soviet engine, search for it at space dock. There are two packs here. This one is for 1.1.3. This one is 1.2.2. This, I believe, uh, what, what these are, are Bobcat Soviet Engine Pack. And this one, I think, has not been updated. Even though it says for 1.2.2, no effort has been made to update the engines for compatibility. That they, they might still work, uh, so you can pick that. But even though I'm using KSP 1.2.2, I prefer this one, which has been updated by two modders. And uh, so I think that they've done some effort on it. And this is an important point to note. There are two types of mods, okay? There are mods that have plugins and mods that don't have plugins. So if we take a look at our game data folder, we'll take a look at Real Fuels. Real Fuels has a plugin. That means that a pre 1.2.2 version of the mod isn't going to work in 1.2.2. You need a 1.2.2 version of the mod. Sometimes uh, uh, the mods will be happy and okay with it, but most of the time it's safer to wait until there's been an official update. Okay, and so most of the stuff we installed in the first video were plugin mods. Uh, Realism Overhaul itself is a plugin mod too. Uh, what we're installing now are part mods, and part mods shouldn't have the plugins in. 
And so it's easier to use older versions of the part mods than the plugin mods. So like FASA, FASA used to have a plugin in, but it's been removed because it was prob problematic for updating it. So yeah, so now it's okay. And uh, similarly with the Soviet engine pack, it's okay to use an older version potentially because it doesn't have a plugin, it's just part mod. Okay, so now we have engines. We have tanks. Actually, right now, we're pretty good to go as far as the, the parts are concerned. Let's take a look at what we actually have. There is a lot of parts to pick from, and all of these are good in their own way. So um, one that I, I particularly like uh, from old times uh, is AIES. You can see it, it says supports 1.0.4 and there might be a more advanced version on the forums but it'll be fine it doesn't have a plugin it's a part mod so and i i i think there might be a fix for the lander legs on the forums which might be helpful but otherwise aies has some good engines too so you might want to download that it also has some good solar panels but um, if you want to use lander legs you might want to get a fix for those Oh, and it has great antennae. It has great antennae. If you're going to use remote tech, and I was going to use remote tech, you will want the antennae. You don't really need AIES's fuel tanks, though, not when you have procedural parts. So I'm just going to delete those. Structure. Um, these structural parts are also covered by procedural parts, so I'm going to delete those as well. Not that AIES is a heavy mod, by the way. AIS, 40 odd megabytes. Now having added all of these uh, custom parts, the stock parts are going to look a little bit out of place. Okay, a lot out of place. So one thing that might be good to install right now is VIN stock revamp. We're going to need it for the career mode anyway. So let's get this VIN stock revamp. Uh, and if you don't know where I got that from, it's from this spreadsheet thing under RP0. RP0 is the career mode. And so this tab here, instead of this realism overhaul tab that tab there has the stuff for the career mode we're gonna just install Ben stock revamp right now okay and the stock revamp I want releases and boy it doesn't seem like it's had a recent release has it mm, it should be alright though after all it's only modifying well pot rebalancing so if it doesn't look like there's been a recent release but when you go out here, you see it's been updated four days ago. I think I just gotta download this one instead of downloading the release one. That's dodgy because uh, this is a work in progress and it might have issues. But I feel a lot better about doing that than uh, oh, there's also sometimes branches like we saw with the with the fair mirror space stuff. Here there's a KSP 1.2 branch. It says stale branches. Uh, that was updated three months ago. Well, I'll take the word for it that that's a stale branch and that I should probably go with this default branch here. Uh, again, sometimes it's just a matter of reading minds, but I certainly don't feel good about trying to use a release from 2015. Just a note, another place, another uh, link that I had given you in the installation video was that to the Realism Overhaul GitHub, and you'll see that has uh, the links to the mod githubs here, including a lot of other mods like Radio Nix mods for um, various real rockets. Radio Nix has a lot of mods covering US rockets and Soviet rockets that you might want to get, and they're all here. And one thing that I mentioned in the previous episode that uh, we don't have that we might want is this KSC switcher. So there are a number of places to get KSC switcher, but maybe just going to the GitHub the Realism Overall GitHub. I'll link those uh, things again in this video. Uh, KSC switcher here. And um, I don't think it's been updated for a while. So, well, no, that, that looks pretty good. March 27th, that's very recent. So we'll get this uh, KSC switcher and we will install that too. So, let's see. Ben stock revamp first. Ben stock revamp is pretty big, but then again, it's changing the stock parts. So it's actually, I think it's often considered more efficient than the stock parts. So uh, we're not going to 
now there's this pruners and unpruners don't prune because some other parts that we're going to install might rely on the stock textures so we're going to leave the stock textures in place and just have this event stock revamp so don't worry that this is a large mod again it's uh, it's basically redoing a lot of the squad parts and it's relatively small for that purpose okay and then KSE switcher so now the only thing we don't have is the clouds I mean we don't have the overall visual enhancements like scatterer and uh, RSS visual enhancements we have a lot of parts now though so that's pretty good so we can see KSC switcher is now in there let's go over which mods we've installed AIES aerospace procedural wings deadly reentry parts of FASA okay KSC switcher we've installed procedural fairings procedural parts uh, we've installed remote tech um, again that's very optional and uh, we've got installed the Soviet engine pack and then stock revamp okay let's fire it up okay you will get a compatibility warning for procedural parts take that seriously um, if, if there's an update for procedural parts jump on it uh, <laughs> um, yeah and pay attention to what procedural parts is doing to make sure that it's alright what we haven't done is installed any um, additional textures for procedural parts so maybe we should take a look at that so in the procedural parts thread here while Kerbal is loading uh, you will notice uh, custom textures and texture packs these are important actually I think uh, um, you, you can uh, click this these reveal hidden comments to figure out which textures you want let's download some of these my favorite textures are probably main sailor oh, that doesn't look very bright anyway main sailor texture is good there's a full thread on it black car textures are also very good uh, I don't know about this uh, in CO's procedural textures I also created some uh, plain color textures I don't know what's going on here but definitely download those um, I, I, I created some plain color textures because that was somehow missing just solid colors and uh, I might link those in the video description as well okay so right now we don't have the additional procedural parts textures but in the future if you ever ask me where did you get that texture for that tank from well that's from procedural parts that thread uh, you can find the textures there okay so remote tech is active very good and uh, watch out for that uh, so you do need communication uh, that effectively replaces how the communication network works in stock Kerbal so it doesn't work the way stock Kerbal does it works the way remote tech does and um, that is a tutorial all on its own so we now have all sorts of launch sites these are all selectable launch sites that you can uh, well that you can launch from and that's KSC switcher and these little dots are the communication tracking stations so so that when you launch uh, in, instead of just completely losing communication when you get out of Cape Canaveral it'll switch to Bermuda and then link through there so that you can keep communication okay and you can see our little test uh, satellite there right now okay well let's take a look at building a rocket again now this is uh, the rocket from our last video but it looks a lot different doesn't it it looks very different it looks uh, to my mind a lot better in a way though I, I guess I probably wouldn't have wanted some sort of orange tank instead and that is of course because of Venstock stock revamp changing the textures so that's that's pretty nice and our probe is looking very proby still the dish is looking different too it's actually a little bit wider um, otherwise function uh, functionality is still the same we still got the same fuel and same electric charge uh, same highly pressurized tank the sole panels now look like this so not 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 a huge change there but uh, that's good they still work and of course still our one kilonewton thruster there the coupler is a different looking and uh, we have those fairings the fairings actually look quite nice but uh, let's start from the top down and replace these parts with the new parts that we have to show the difference so these are stock fairings and you know them very well um, 
one thing about the procedural fairings is the procedural fairings have a decoupler built into in realism overhaul. In, uh, if you just use procedural fairings without realism overhaul, they do not have a decoupler built in. Okay, uh, so payload, and uh, there are two fairing bases. The one that's most like this is this flat one, but you can also have this one. They function the same way. Okay, and uh, what you want are fairing pieces. And so here's one of the benefits of procedural fairings is that you have different kind of fairing textures and you'll have more of them with the additional texture packs if you install the additional texture packs with procedural parts you'll get more textures and so that might end up in this category here uh, so watch out in the aerodynamic category because that's where everything used to be but let's say we want hmm, this conic and egg shaped ones uh, let's just go with just this basic egg shape procedural. It's not my favorite one because we don't have those additional textures, but that's what that looks like. Okay, and again, the coupler built into the base, you can see that here, and ejection force is zero there. Okay, and it automatically sizes, so you don't have to manually size it, but you can manually size it if you want. Let's say you wanted sort of a standard fairing instead of uh, uh, just whatever it gives you. Also, uh, there is the matter that this doesn't really fit our tank sizes right now. This is 3 meters. We want to size it to 2.5 meters. But let's say we wanted to just make a standard fairing that fits other payloads as well. We would turn uh, fairing auto shape off. And then if we want to make it bigger this way, we lengthen it like that. If you want to make it bigger width wise, we change the max size. Um, let's make it more, let's make it sort of Falcon 9-ish. Um, and if you want to change where uh, this part ends, we move that up like this. Okay, so that, that's our procedural fairings. And it's up to you which one you want to use, they'll both work. Um, so now we've changed that and we've got that kind of rocket. Actually with the Venstock revamp textures that doesn't look too bad. But again, uh, you will have other texture choices available if you add other uh, texture packs with procedural parts. What happens is that um, what you got realism overhaul references the procedural part textures to make new textures sometimes. Okay, um, this engine looks great now. This used to be the Terrier engine, and you can see our little bubbles. We've still got the Severtrons selling the fuel down. They're here now, and uh, still the RCS ports. But maybe, maybe we want a, sort of a non-standard tank. Remember, we were sort of constrained on the burn time of this by the size of the tank. And I didn't really want to go to too low a thrust to weight ratio, but this is really too high. This is overpowered. We want something sort of in the middle. So we're going to temporarily take these things off. Okay, we've got all these things to remember. Uh, and those are the vernier engines. Okay, going to dump this. Let's get one of those procedural parts tanks. So there are these. There's this procedural parts a shielded tank which has a higher temperature tolerance. But for your basic rocket you can just pick this one. The one with uh, shielding is heavier. So watch out for that. Uh, if you don't need to use it, don't use it. So I'm going to increase the diameter to 2.5. I'm going to pick my texture. Um, these are, again, you can add other textures and I highly recommend it. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Uh, the, these don't really, uh, uh, with the Venstock revamp textures we have, these don't look that spectacular. But there are some really nice textures. Let's go with a Saturn texture. Okay. Now, this is uh, configurable, so when we add the kerosene and liquid oxygen here, we take a look at our delta B stats. That that's not the thrust to weight ratio I'm looking for, so I'm just going to shorten it up. You know the tank type. Okay, this is default, which is good for this engine. If we were going to use different engines, actually, you know what? Let's change our engine. This is a nice engine, but let's say we wanted to change it to the RL10. It used to be that we didn't have a good RL10 model. Uh, RL-10 is an equivalent thrust engine, but much more efficient. Uh, the downside is that it takes more tank space because the fuel is hydrogen and oxygen, and so it's less dense. This is one of the complexities of 
of um, real fuels. But this is the RL-10 engine. It's used on the Atlas rocket, and it is used on it was used on the Titan rocket, and uh, it is uh, instead of uh, this engine, which had about 320-ish ISP. This has 444 base and has uh, other configurations that have more. Again, you can go to engine show UI to see all the configurations, and there's even a methane burning one instead of hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. Uh, we'll keep it to the base configuration for now. No need to uh, be too complicated about it. So we don't want to use kerosene and oxygen anymore. Let's use liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen. But wait, um, now I don't want to use default tank. When you see hydrogen, you need to switch to cryogenic tanks. Sometimes even if it's just liquid oxygen or liquid methane, you want cryogenic tanks. Cryogenic tanks are heavier but they're heavier so that they keep the fuel from boiling off so much. If you have a default tank, the fuel is going to boil off like crazy. Um, with the cryogenic tanks, it boils off less. I think the service module tanks make it uh, boil off even less, but they're, the heavy, uh, they're even heavier. And then the fuselage tanks, are you can actually see the ma dry mass, right? 125 kilograms, 149, 235, so a huge mass hit there. Fuselage is 300. Balloon is the lightest, but balloon means that the tank can't even maintain structural integrity without being uh, pumped with some gas, like helium. So balloon tanks, the Centaur stage on the Atlas rocket is a balloon tank. It's very, very lightweight. I mean, you see, it's ridiculously lightweight, 7 kilograms compared to 125. But that comes at a cost um, structurally. And so they have to be very careful about what payloads they put in and how they put payloads on top of that. Um, and there's a balloon cryo tank as well. Uh, another structural tank, electric propulsion tank for those kinds of fuels, and a life support tank. Okay, so you have those tank possibilities. We want a cryogenic tank. Utilization, uh, for most purposes, you can just leave it uh, at default. Um, it just means uh, of this tank area, uh, tank volume, sorry, how much of it is actually the tank? Because tanks aren't cylinders. Tanks are sort of rounded. That you know they have to contain the fuel in a certain pressurized way, so they don't fill up this entire volume. So what utilization is asking you is how much of the volume is wasted by other stuff, uh, empty space or piping or some other equipment, and uh, I just usually leave it at 86 unless I think that the particular stage uh, might actually fill it. One way uh, that the stage might actually fill it is if you change this shape. Uh, see, shape is now cylinder, but there are other shapes. One shape is this uh, fillet cylinder, or fillet cylinder, I don't know how to say it. I don't. I really don't know how to say it. Um, in this case, you can make a tank that looks like this. See? And now, that that looks like all of it would be the actual tank, right? It doesn't look like there's got to be any empty space in that. And for that, you can use Utilization 100. Okay, but for the cylinder tank, I always imagine a little tank inside of that, actually. And so I changed the Utilization to 86. Now, a thrust to weight ratio is pretty darn high because, again, this fuel is very, uh, very not dense. <laughs> it takes a lot of volume. And you can see the burn time is only two minutes. So we, we can make this bigger. And uh, we found out that a 1.1 thrust weight ratio was really overpowered. So let's go with uh, 8, uh, 0.8 thrust weight ratio. That should be fine. And this is a centaurist-ish stage now. And maybe, maybe we can, I mean, this is a lot of delta V here, isn't it? 7,900. We, re we really found out that we could do with uh, a lot more fuel on the probe core, right? we could have a bigger probe. We can send it out to geostationary orbit, which is pretty far out there. It's 35,786 kilometers around the Earth. So let's have one of those fillet cylinder things. Diameter, a little bit lower. Gonna have it like that. Uh, we don't need this tank anymore, strictly speaking. Now, if, if we want to be nice about it, we should have this be a highly pressurized tank as well. Default is not highly pressurized, cryogenic is not highly pressurized, service module is highly pressurized, okay? 
So this is now a highly pressurized tank. You can see highly pressurized true. And again, you can see here that's false. So you can check like that. And the fuel for this particular engine is MMHN204. Now it has 3000 meters per second, which is excellent. And uh, our second stage here doesn't have quite as much, but um, it does have multiple ignitions as well going for it. So that's an interesting thing. So we could probably get pretty far with this little probe here. Uh, with this tank being that big, we can move these lower. Um, I still wanted a three-way symmetry though. And of course we must paint this tank something. I'll keep it plain for now until we get better textures. Uh, well, this sort of situation... Now, the reason I did that uh, pseudo hot staging thing in the previous episode was just for looks. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't really hot staging. I'll go over hot staging some other time. It seems people may be confused about that. Um, for now, uh, I was asked how to make an interstage. And so let's do an interstage. Uh, you can make an interstage with the stock parts. Um, uh, let's have a... Oop, that's not right. Uh, for the stock parts, I have to remember we have a decoupler. We have procedural decouplers now, too, so you can use those. We don't want the shroud. This is from FASA, by the way. Okay, and the way you make a stock interstage is just by saying close bearing like that. <laughs> and then that, that's the stock interstage. It's done. Um, you could make it a little bit better than that. Build fairing. Uh, there you go. No, it doesn't clip so much. But... You can also make it using the procedural fairings. And so with procedural fairings, we had these for the upper fairing, but we have this inner stage for lower fairing. And this is very, 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 very important. Um, this, The top node there, that one has a decoupler. So if I put it on there, now that, that has a decoupler. The bottom one, you can see there's a bottom node there. That one doesn't have a decoupler. Make sure you put it on the one with the decoupler. But, this is really handy. Let's say you wanted to build a Falcon 9 rocket, and you needed some place to put a probe core. Well, guess what? You can uh, just uh, plop a probe core right on here. And that's going to stay with the bottom stage, right? And we need to resize this to make sure it's the right size. But, yeah, you can put batteries, you can put parachutes right there. That all stays with the lower cores. So that's one of the reasons I really like these procedural fairings, or I've gotten used to using the procedural fairings. I'm going to leave that off for now. And we need to put all of our other stuff onto the upper stage. Remember, we had these tanks. Um, we, we, could, we could use procedural tanks for those too, right? You can take a procedural tank. They're radially attachable. We've got this, and I told you about this, uh, you can attach the thrusters directly to these, so that's sort of handy. But we can make the little cylinders increase that, and now they're little round things. We want them to be service module. I want four of them. Most of the time when I do hot staging, it's with a pre-configured rocket that's especially meant for it. I don't know if this is going to work or not. But if you're going to light this engine while that's still attached in order to save yourself from having to sell fuel down with other motors, um, then you're going to need some sort of gap to let the thrust go out. And so that's what we're making here. You could add a little bit more leeway space. You could add a heat shield to this if you want. Again, uh, whatever goes here stays attached to that. Um, you could add vernier engines again, but now we are using hydrogen and oxygen. These vernier engines were meant for kerosene and oxygen. So instead of using those to maintain our orientation, we're going to use the RCS to help with the roll. Make sure that uh, with that staging, it looks a little bit weird now, but I usually use just the LH rockets myself. And again, the benefit to using the procedural parts is that you can size it exact for the exact burn time that you want instead of something arbitrary. And we'll use default tanks, and we're going to put a kerosene engine on here. And the engine that I'm looking for is the H1 from the FASA pack. So this time we're going to be using these. 
And this is the, the RS-27 is the engine on the Delta II rocket. So that's the upgraded version of this. But we're going to put two here. And you can see they fit. Uh, SSTU, you can have multiple engines as part of the same part. It has a right-click menu and you can add multiple engines to it. So that's one of the nice parts of SSTU labs when you, uh, if you decide to use that mod. Okay, and uh, we will upgrade these to the RS-27A from the Delta II. And we will fill this tank. Let's see what that gives us. That's a pretty high thrust weight ratio right there. Maybe we should have a bigger rocket. I mean, maybe this is just um, a little bit too small. So how about we increase the base size here? Well, I've made a little curved fairings there, and that's not good. So now it's a little bit heftier, and now the thrust weight ratio is a little bit more reasonable. We could move those together. Maybe for looks also tuck them in. But now we have some serious delta V to work with. Also a serious thrust to weight ratio when the first stage ends, but let's ignore that for now. Okay, well now we have a different rocket. It's a more powerful rocket. It's not that much bigger. Well, it's a bit heavier actually. Okay, well now we have a rocket. And now you should test your performance with such a rocket to make sure that you don't have too much lag. But rather than do that right now, I'm going to add the visual mods. And we want to make sure that looks nice. I know my computer can handle it, but you might want to fly this rocket. Oh, make sure to light the engines before actually staging the, the launch clamps. Um, you will want to try and test whether your computer can handle it by flying this rocket or some other kind of rocket like this first. Note that you now have a wonderful selection of engines, right? These are the Soviet engines. You can tell they're, they're white and they are named RD. RD means rocket engine. So uh, th these are all your uh, Soviet rocket engines. You got some engines from AIES here, okay? And uh, yeah, much better stocked right now. Okay, so let's talk about adding the visual mods. Well, I say visual mods, there's really only one go-to for you, and that's this RSS Visual Enhancements on the spreadsheet. Um, you can also find it on the forums. So if we go to the forums, this was the SSDU lab thing, I type in um, RSS Visual Enhancement. Oh, you can see I've got RSS Visual Enhancements there. Okay, uh, RSS Visual seems to work to get some results. Um, not really the result I was looking for, though. Interestingly enough, here's Scatterer. Uh, you will be needing that. There is this Extreme Texture mod, which is really spectacular, but unless you have the most wonderful of wonderful systems, you're not going to be able to run that. Um, the textures are intense. The RAM requirements are also intense. So, yeah, that, that might be a little bit down the road. This is the old version of RSS Visual Enhancements, and I'm wondering why the new version isn't popping up. Let me keep searching. Okay, well, I can't figure out where the forum thread is. So, actually, uh, RSS Visual Enhancement says no obvious issues. We just click on this, go there, and this is the download source code. And download that. I, I already have it, but I'll download it again just to make sure that I have the same version that you will be getting. Okay, taking a look at what we have in this zip, there's an RSS VE folder. And that's it. Okay, so if that's the case, then we've got some work to do. Uh, this is not all that we need. So first, before I install that, I'm going to put Scatterer in because it requires that. That's important. So now we have this mod called Scatterer, and you can find that on the, on the forums easily enough. We also need um, environmental visual enhancements. And that's a little bit tricky. So actually, from this sheet, you can see environmental visual enhancements here. That's EVE. You can see, makes game too slow. Don't worry about that. We are going to be uh, rewriting the configurations on that using RSS visual enhancements. It overwrites it. All we want is uh, this release. We do not want the configurations. So the release is just the plugin, and it's only 2 megabytes. So that one is what we want. 
Okay, and environmental visual enhancements. What you should have here is the plugins. That's what we need. Okay, and RSS visual enhancements will depend on scatterer and it'll depend on environment, environmental visual enhancements. Now that we have those two, we go back to our RSS visual enhancements folder and it, you can see it's got these configurations for Scatterer. Um, it's only got its own plugins and all this atmosphere stuff is a configuration for environmental visual enhancements. See the city lights configuration? If you take a look at uh, environmental visual enhancements plugins, citylights.dll. So this is a configuration for that extension. Okay? So we want this folder in here and then we will fire up uh, Kerbal Space Program and realism overhaul and see if it works. Note that this is not a trivial thing, 234 megabytes, okay? So, yeah, uh, using this might cause some uh, some lag on your system, depending on your system. Okay, we are now back in the save. You might not see clouds on the startup screen, but as you can see, we do have clouds now floating over. And if we take a look at the tracking station, we should see a crowd in shrouded earth. And indeed that is the case. Very good. Looking excellent, in fact. Uh, so yeah, now we can launch. Uh, let's take a look at the additional textures that we have for our rocket, though. I wasn't satisfied with those textures that we had before. So it's just a test two. Okay, and uh, yeah, now I've got all the other procedural parts textures, and it's quite a selection. Um, I like that that texture. That's from the main sailor one. I don't know that that's making it a little bit weird. We've got new textures for the fairings though now. I wonder if some of them got here or are they all here? They're all here. Okay, so instead of these grayish ones, which I'm not too fond of, we now have these main sailor ones. And we could go with uh, conic white here, which is just a cleaner white. And we could go with uh, the egg-shaped white ones on top. Okay. All right. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. Nope. That is the remote tech thing and flight computer for remote tech. It's showing the signal delay there. Um, I expect that with the probe core's own communication, we should be fine. Also, we've got that huge dish, but that has to be configured manually. Now, to hot stage properly, what we want is... Uh, we need the burn time. Maybe that's best under vessel length now. I need to configure the windows. Sorry about this, but we'll have to keep this up. Uh, we could have uh, short stats. So, with about three seconds before the stage runs out, we'll light the upper stage engine. That's how it works. That way it starts up with the fuel still settled down before we dump the first stage. That way we don't need the Ullage rockets, the little SRBs. The downside is you're sort of wasting Delta V like that, and you might have to add additional heat shielding to the inner stage, which makes it heavier. So it's a trade-off. Okay, now, uh, hot staging means that I need this engine over here, darn it. That's the whole point. Okay, igniting the second stage. And then separate. See how that works? So that way we don't need the Ullage rockets, because the first stage is keeping the fuel settled. And, well, we can stage those RCS boards. And then uh, separate the fairing. And we're on our way. Remember, this has multiple ignitions. To settle the fuel down for the second time that we have to ignite, we'll use the RCS boards. Right now, before I forget, I'm going to activate the main dish. And I'm going to target Earth in general. The probe core itself... Uh, has an omni range of 2,000 kilometers. So we'll keep that in mind. And uh, let's extend solar panels. Again, you might want all y'all in here. Um, 
generally probes don't extend their solar panels here, and actually, with so much electric charge, we don't strictly need to. My plan here, uh, we're communicating uh, either through Cape Canaveral or Bermuda or Wallops there, and uh, to do the the burn for geosynchronous orbit, we need to be above the equator, and so probably I'll want to communicate with uh, this location in Nigeria would be a good place to communicate with for that burn. By the way, this uh, launcher could easily send this probe to the moon, and this probe would uh, be able to capture an orbit around the moon as well. One thing we need to change is a skybox. Uh, for that, you want texture replacer, and then you'll need to look into what skybox you want. I have, uh, I, I'm using Average Joe's, I think it is, or no, no, Teflon Mike's skybox. Teflon Mike's skybox from his Twitch page. Um, not this, this is not Teflon mics. I normally use Teflon mics. Um, but all you need is texture replacer and somebody's skybox, and it's up to you uh, to pick which one you want. But that's how you replace that and make it look better. Okay, we are about to shut down. And that's good enough for now. 276 by 207, we're not staying in this orbit. We've got more than 6,000 meters per second left, as you can see. Though I really don't want to use, uh, spend all 19 minutes on that stage, frankly. Um, all right, so you can see here. Hopefully, we will get communication through Nigeria. There, we will briefly lose communication here, right there, no connection. And then we pick it up uh, through those islands there, and then Nigeria. Now, where we want to make our burn for geosynchronous orbit is if we take a look at the surface info, we want to be over the equator. And right now we're getting closer and closer to the equator. It'll take some time to do the burn, so we might as well start that now. We're at five degrees latitude. And so while we have communication, orbit prograde. Mm, it seems like the reaction wheel is being used here. I would rather use the RCS ports here. They don't use that much fuel. I mean, actually, we're overloaded with our CS fuel here. Now, we do need to make sure it doesn't use any of this stuff up here, though. Okay, now, as I said, we need to sell the fuel down. To make sure that that's happening, first of all, the icon will change to red if the fuel is not settled. Also, it'll say here, propellant, very stable or not stable. Right now, it's very stable, partly because we just did that turn. Um, it doesn't take much to sell the fuel down. But if you need to, just uh, press H to use the RCS ports to sell the fuel down and wait till the icon turns green. Ignitions remaining, make sure you have ignitions. And then when you're ready, throttle up. Our target apoapsis is 35,786 kilometers. It can be higher or lower than that, depending on whether you need to reposition it with respect to where you want this to be over. So there is some leeway. Taking a look at our huge main dish, that has a dish range of 2.65 terameters. That's 2.65 uh, 2 billion kilometers. So that's quite a good range. Energy consumption is only 0.06 per second now, but it is constant. It's not like in stock where it only uses uh, power when it's transmitting. It's a constant uh, it's constant energy consumption. And you do have to tune it to some target. Uh, given how high we're going, just targeting Earth is probably for the best. Uh, but if this was actually going to communicate with some other probe, like, you know, going out to Pluto or something, well, hmm, the range... I'll have to see about that. But uh, might be good for the outer planets, but Pluto I'm not too sure about. Uh, so, yeah, in that case, uh, you'll want to tune it to that probe and have some other antenna on here tuned to Earth to relay the message back. If you don't have anything tuned to Earth to relay the message back, it's not going to work out for you. Okay, paying attention to our apoapsis here. I'm going to stop it a bit short of my target and then use the RCS to get to the intended apoapsis. 35,000. Actually, I said 786. 786. Okay, good. Um, and uh, that is fine. That's a geosynchronous transfer orbit. Uh, actually, the decoupler is going to give us a little bit of a kick as we let go of the probe, and the probe will do the rest as is normal. So, separation.
and okay we're a little bit ahead okay so now we're going to try and go into a geosynchronous orbit uh, the orbital period will be 23 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds if you want to be precise about it also if you want to be precise about it you should probably have RCS ports on here and not just a 1 kilonewton thruster you can see it's nicely covering a wide swath we can see all the communication lines you can tell that if you've got a lot of missions ongoing you're gonna have a lot of lines with remote tech Again, with a pressure-fed engine, you don't need to worry about settling the fuel down, but the tanks are heavier to compensate, so... Okay, thanks to the wonders of physical time warp, we're getting close to the end of the burn here. Um, the 1 kilonewton thruster, and it's actually 1.8 kilonewtons because of the fuel we're using, you will learn to love this thing because infinite ignitions, no need to settle the fuel down. One drawback, uh, one thing that doesn't have is throttling, so if I throttle down here, uh, it, it clearly does not actually throttle down. So no throttling on it. Uh, there are other engines that are throttleable, like the Lunar Gemini Lander engine, which I had included. Uh, that one, uh, throttling engines are better for the whole lander business. So keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to be uh, doing multiple ignitions. So what we're looking for here is an... I mean, I'm going to let the apoapsis and periapsis go wherever but I want the orbital period to be 23 hours 56 minutes. Our inclination is about 3 degrees, which is not bad. Okay, 23 hours 56 minutes and almost 4 seconds. And it looks like we are currently servicing um, the Indian Ocean, Australia, um, and Southeast Asia. So there you go, geosynchronous uh, satellites and a much better looking universe. In the next episode I need to talk about texture replacer and getting that skybox in and then we will talk about career mode and the mods that you need to have a realism overhaul career mode. So that's the next episode. Uh, with that thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time. Wait, 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 uh oh. Um. I found the glitch. Apparently, we're underwater now. Hmm. I've heard about this. I haven't experienced it myself because I've been using extreme textures instead. Let's see if going to the tracking station and coming back will help. Uh, th this is new for KSP 1.2.2. Um, I haven't seen that whole um, KSC underwater glitch. But that's how you fix it, apparently. So, uh, a little note there. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, just go to the tracking station using the buttons and come back and it'll be alright. Okay, see ya.